Hello and welcome back to Kettle Corner Racing. Today I'm going to do a do-it-yourself on how to measure your own cylinder. I'm going to clean up some of the uh, some of the falsehoods about doing this. Um, first one, you don't have to take it to a machine shop to get this done. You can spend 300 bucks on equipment to do it, or you can spend three dollars on equipment to do it. But it's something you can definitely do yourself. Um, very easy. The other good thing about measuring your own cylinder is when you do send it out to get a board, because that you're definitely not going to be able to do yourself, using these techniques you'll be able to check the work that the shop did for you and make sure they did it correctly. If you get a cylinder back that's got 8,000 piston clearance on a fresh board, somebody did something wrong and it wasn't you. Well, it was you. You took it to the wrong shop. But anyway, we're going to show you how to test all of this stuff and I uh, hope you learned something. Okay, the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to do a little bit of math, unfortunately. So I'll clear up some of this. Another thing that I find... Wait a minute. I'm invisible. All right, I'll work with it. Now, uh, one thing that a lot of people ask me, they have a hard time distinguishing piston sizes. So what I'm going to try and do is explain this. One millimeter equals 39 thousandths. Or you can round it off to 40. That means every 10 thousandths equals one size over or 0.25 over a stock bore or whatever the existing bore is. Stock blaster, 66 millimeters or two inches, 595 thousandths. 0.25 millimeters over equals 10 thousandths or 66.25 millimeters. Okay, what I'm going to explain here is the numbers on the top of this piston um, that pertain to the size. This is a piston from a friends at Weisco. You're going to look at the last four numbers. I don't know if you can see this. It says 6825. What that denotes is this piston is 68.25 millimeters. <clears throat> we know a stock cylinder is 66 millimeters. This is two and one quarter millimeters oversize. As I said previously, I'm going to show you different ways to measure your cylinder. This being the most accurate. The tools I have here, so I have a Starrett 2 to 3 micrometer, and I have a dial bore gauge. What we're going to do is we're going to set the mic at a known point. The known point is going to be the 2.595. I'm going to capture the stock size of a blaster cylinder here. I don't care what my cylinder is right now. I'm going to capture that size transpose that information to the bore gauge, put the bore gauge inside of a cylinder, take a reading, and that'll give me a pretty good idea of where I have to go. Okay, what I've done is I took my mic and I set it to my dimension, 2.595. I'm going to take my dial bore gauge. I'm going to put it between the faces of the mic. If you look at the bore gauge, look at the dial. I put a little black dot on that's probably never going to come off but that dot denotes zero, okay? That's where I want this to be for a stock bore. That's going to tell me I have a 66 millimeter bore. Gauge already set to where it has to be, so I'm going to drop it in. Watch the needle. Notice how it doesn't come to the line. I'm going to move this a little. That's a stock bore, right on a black line. That's 25 over, that's 50 over, plus a few thousands. So I've got a 50 over with about four thousands clearance. We're going to write that down. It's important whenever you're measuring a piston, you measure about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom, right in this area. Send your micrometer or whatever device you're using to measure it, about right there, and that's going to give you an accurate dimension as to the diameter of the piston. Alright, so here's our calculations. Our stock bore is 2 inches 595 thousandths. When we put our dial bore gauge in, we discovered that it was 24 thousandths bigger for a total of 2 inches 619 thousandths. The 24 over, if we just do rough calculations in our head, 10, 20, would be this times 2, which would be a 50 over. We still have this 4 thousandths left over. So we have a 0.5 over bore right now, and we have 4 thousandths piston clearance. Now, 
piston clearance with Wisco is worked into the piston. When piston manufacturers in Japanese engines get together, American piston manufacturers or any, and Japanese, they have to have a set of standards. So the Japanese said, we're going to bore our cylinders right to size and you guys are going to work your clearance into them. So something here can't be 66 millimeters and in this case, in almost all cases, it's the piston. The piston is two and a half thousandths smaller than the stock bore or the bore that you're going to attempt to put the piston into. So, if that sounds confusing, this should straighten it out. We're four thousandths over, our .5 over, and then when we add our piston clearance to it, two and a half thousandths, that tells me that I've got six and a half thousandths of piston clearance. That's way too much. Okay, that was the first way of measuring a cylinder and what I consider, that's the only way we do it in here. I consider that to be the right way. Not everybody has the money to go out and drop on tools like this. Your bore gauge, if you get a Chinese one, is going to cost you between oh, $65 and 100 bucks. A Starrett mic, don't buy Starrett if you're looking to save money on micrometers. You can technically get these tools, if you get them off of eBay, you probably spend less than $60 on them. You buy them new, Chinese brands, you probably spend a hundred, you get the top of the line stuff, you're going to drop three or four hundred dollars. This is a dial caliper, digital caliper, I'm sorry. Um, these are cheap. You can get these from MSC. We buy a lot of our tools there. These calipers, I believe you can get for about twenty-five dollars. They have two functions. You can go metric, you can go to the inch. What makes it nice here is if you're working with millimeters, you can set it for millimeters. You clean these off. These are the contact surfaces. Bring them in. Zero it out. Make sure you're at zero. Next step, open them back up. Come in and catch your board dimensions. They have to be straight up and down and you have to be at the biggest part of the bore. I don't know if you can see that and keep in mind it's upside down. I'm getting 66.6 .6 millimeters. Okay, this is the third way. This is what I like to call my redneck racing way of doing it. Um, definitely the cheapest way. We don't do it like this in here, but it'll definitely work for you in your garage. What I have here is I have a Weisco 0.5 over 66 and a half millimeter piston. That's the piston that belongs in this bore. And we calculated that we would have six and a half thousandths of clearance. What you do is you take a feeler gauge. I have fours, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I can hear it right now. Somebody's out there cringing saying, oh my god, he's going to stick a feeler gauge on a piston. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt it. I'm going to take a four thousandths feeler gauge. I'm just going to slide it in there. I'm not forcing it. If I can fit that in there, I have four thousandths of piston clearance. This is a five. I have five thousandths of piston clearance. And we learned that that's too much. This is a six. I have six thousandths piston clearance. Here's a seven. Seven tight. I'm stopping right here. This, this would potentially damage your piston. You don't want to force anything into here. What we've done, if you work with the feeler gauge and the dial caliper in unison, you can determine what your bore size is, then you can determine what your piston clearance is. This will definitely get you in the ballpark in a way that you can do it on the bench. Most importantly, as I mentioned earlier, when you get your cylinder back from a shop, this method right here with a feeler gauge, if nothing else, you can determine if you have correct piston clearance. Okay, I hope this helped out. I hope I didn't confuse you too bad. It does seem a little confusing at first, but once you do it a few times, it's no big deal. If you have any questions, feel free. Drop me an email. Give me a call or just send me a PM and I'll do what I can to help you out. Thanks for watching.